Hey guys, I'm David Vianic. And I'm Spence Gonzalez. And welcome to Stripped, brought to you by William Hill. Each week we get nostalgic as we talk to celebrity guests, telling us their life stories through retro football kits. Our guests pick four shirts that tell us the story of their life. The first one, the unforgettable one, the haunted one, and the named one. Now today's guest is England's most capped player. Vooj, 172 caps. One of the finest footballers this country has ever produced. It is Farrah Williams. How are you, Farrah? Hi, guys. Good. How are you? That Good to see you, man. And you. Should I clap, clap myself in? Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> legend. We just, we just keep having legends in the building, Vooj. I know. It is yeah. awesome. Of course. And I've actually met Farrah before. What was it? Yeah. How come you did with me? Because you had a, like, some jaw problem. Oh, okay. What was it again? You had to go. Yeah, I had a. Um... Oh, he's faking. He didn't want to meet me. That's why. Yeah, yeah look. He didn't want to meet me. <laughs> no, because I love You know sweets. why? It's because yeah. we didn't have the comfy chairs. That's yeah, why I yeah, was. Yeah. He was on the stalls. You like the you. comfort, innit? Sorry for man. I had a, I had a, um, a cyst. Because I eat too much sweets. Oh, mate. I'm really? the same. Yeah, so the face, my face was just out here. I, had, I, I could see my own face. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I can't. I can't go on camera like this. Oh, can't. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So stay away from sweets, man. But. The Euros. Oh. How have you found it? Yeah, oh, hard to put into words. Good question. No, it's been unbelievable. I think never did I think there would be a packed out Old Trafford for an opening game of the Euros and watching the Lionesses walk out and seeing that for real. Mm. Yeah, and it just made me mad proud of the girls and, and where the game is at now. And but there is, it seems like, mm. I mean, I might be a bit ignorant to this, mm. but there seems to have been an increase in quality. Mm -hmm. There oh, yeah. seems to have been in general, maybe popularity's gone up, people are more interested. What, what do you reckon that is? You know, it's, it's good that you recognise that because it's true that the game is in a better place. I think the fact that there's now more professional leagues, not just in England, but, it, you know, in France, in Germany, more nations. So obviously it ups the quality within the national team. And, uh, mm. you know, coming into the tournament, us ex-players are always trying to hype tournaments as best as we can because we want the fan base. But genuinely coming into this tournament, the hype that we were given, we was expecting on the pitch and I think, you know, every nation have delivered and I think it shows because not just the England stadiums have been packed. There was 28,000 at France-Germany semi-final, the mm. biggest crowd ever in a European championship in, in any tournament in a women's game. So I think the level of football, I think your, your neutral football fans have appreciated it and, and, and bought tickets to go and watch. You saw this coming, didn't it? Honestly, you saw it coming. Of course I did. Of course I did. Genius. Of course yeah. I did. No, look, we, it should be where it is now. It's mm -hmm. taken forever to do that. You know, players before me, that gave me an opportunity to do what I did. I've given my part, and now it's in a, a really good position for the girls to take it to the next level, and, and they've already started that with this tournament. Yeah, yeah I think we should take far back. You know, you know I love the word nostalgic. I love nostalgia. Yeah, that's, I want to call my, my next child. <laughs> nostalgia? Yeah, of course. Or Nost. Oh, that's a poor nost, name, yeah. Nost Nostal? Nostal? Nice, yeah, Nostal's a nice <laughs> cool word. Nice name, yeah. Or Alja. Or Alja. Don't matter, because you don't mind what they call it anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Call him that or call it that. So we're going to go with the first top. Uh, you're a Chelsea fan. So it's the Chelsea away kit from 94 to 96. It was the, the grey with the orange. Mm. I, used to, I used to think it was curtains. Or something about Chelsea <laughs> with, with that pattern. What, you know, what, what, when you look at that shirt, what, what comes to mind? Mark Hughes. Oh. Loved him. You know yeah. what? I remember we signed him, 1.5 million, and I remember running around my estate like a mad woman, or a mad kid, as a kid, <laughs> because he was so good at United. And to sign a big player like that, and we had players, and we, Chelsea would always buy like one big player, and you'd always be like, you know, at the beginning of the season, really excited by it. But I just remember him, and he, you know, an unbelievable striker when he was at Man United, and was hopeful that he'd pretty much do the same when he came to Chelsea. But the colours, Orange is my mm. favourite colour. It's just the colours. And orange Chelsea and were always like... Orange Chelsea cool. was Chelsea was just blue. And mm. then the away kits always used to be like white and red or, or red. -y. And so, yeah, to come out with like that, that grey and orange. Have they had a grey and orange? I don't feel like nah. they, have, they haven't had nah. one since. That's what I mean, nah. I mean... <laughs> that should get thrown back. Do you know they think that? They should, <laughs> do, they should do like a they little should, re release of that colour. Yeah, yeah but nice. it It'd shouldn't be, be the way it was, I think. Mm. Nah, it's a very, very intriguing yeah. kit. You like your kits as well. You like your kits. Oh, I love kits so yeah. much. He's got so much. You got that one? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I, I'm not a Chelsea fan myself. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind Chelsea. I loved mm. it. But what is it about Chelsea? What drew you towards Chelsea and for you to, to, to begin supporting them? No, nah, it was family. My uncle, they were massive Chelsea fans. Um, I mean, they took me to a game in, I can't remember, it was 91 maybe, 91, when we played Luton. That was the first game ever introduced to 
watching football live. I mean, drew 3-3 three, three with Luton. It was a dreadful game um, from what I can remember. Um, and I didn't really know anybody. I didn't really know any players. And then, you know, there was four of us as kids growing up. So it's quite back then to take us to football all the time, bit of a headache for them. And we used to go every single week. And it was that kit just reminded me because I was probably... I started to know and like football a lot more. So I go back to 91, obviously that was 94, three years on from my first game. I'm like, ah, oh, I know a little bit about football. And I started to try and learn the game through watching. Mm. And then my brothers used to go and I'd be like, I don't know, for example, it was Hughie that day if he played well or whoever it might have been. And I'd run back to my estate and I'd want to be that player and try and like literally do whatever they did on that day in that game. So yeah, it just made me want to learn through watching. And it was easy, it was just across the bridge. Every time I think of Chelsea back in the day, I think of like the, the big cardboard done behind the goal. So if you shot and it went over <laughs> or wide, it bounced off that board. You're Boom. On a, you're on about when their stand went down. <laughs> Do you know what? That, that, yeah, that, that stand, that was, I had an actual nightmare there one time. Chelsea were playing Millwall, and Millwall fans were horrible. Sorry to all Millwall fans, but you are. And it was an <laughs> FA Cup game, and I remember, because it's a temporary stand, mm -hmm. and they lost in the, in the cup. They're lifting up the chairs and, like, throwing them at us. And honestly, as a kid then, petrified, not wanting to go back. But character building. But, yeah, it did. It built character, you're right. Just dodging chairs. It's mad. You know, like, when you go, like, when I was a kid, I remember I used to just, you go and you try and learn all the songs, don't you? And you get involved with singing all, all the tunes and whatever. And then as an adult, and as you start to understand the game, I'm like, shh, I just want to watch and, like, mm. I want to learn, like, become a coach mm. rather than a fan. And that's how I watch football now. And talking about character building, you played a lot of football in the cages. Mm. Talk to me about the cages. The best memories, I think. What do they teach you? Everything about the game. I, I say, you know, people ask me where I learned the most about football and it was, it was in a cage because you had to survive. You know, you go in a cage and it would be like us three here. The sizes of us, you have to learn different things, how to hold on to the ball. So you're protecting it. How can I get past you? Strength. There's loads of loads, can I find a pass? And you had the walls. I mean, what I learned is that <laughs> the players that were crap, sometimes I passed to them and I didn't get it back. So it was like, okay, I'm not going to use you anymore. I just used the wall to get around it. So you learn off different things. There was so much you could learn from. Rebounds off the back of the wall. And that's like a cutback now in a game. Mm. So all the things I took from a cage, I probably didn't know growing up that I was learning that and learning the game within that tight cage. Did you ever play a, a game like four goals or four corners? Do you remember that where you had four goals and yeah. it was just shoot, shooting? Shooting, yeah. Two touches. Two, everything, yeah. Shoot, we play end, so end to end if there was only two or four, yeah. Headers Love them volleys. games. Headers and volleys, 66, World Cup. 66? We used to call it. I don't know why we used to call it 60 call it, seconds. Yeah, people call it. Yeah, seconds, I don't know why yeah. it was 66. 66. If you go over, if, yeah. you, if the keeper has the last touch, there's another six, se six oh, seconds. Six seconds, yeah. 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 Legendary, man. And yeah. did you have uh, bags as goals? Oh, always. Always. <laughs> bags yeah. as goals. That always. was a They good were the one. best. That's the thing. Like, when you have a ca that's what's so. The game's so different now. When I, when I think back to the cage and even the parks, you used to just go to a park and there'd be hundreds mm. of us just playing. Kids, you put the bikes down as, that's you know, or, or even, yeah, the bikes or the, you know, your, your jacket. And it's like, oh, that's good enough for the post. You, you just imagine all these things happening. You don't have that creativity in kids now. They can't, mm. one, they can't afford to, to play in a cage because of the prices of. You know, you, you think of goals, for example, how much you've got to pay for an hour. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. We didn't pay, we just go into our cage and shut the gate and that was it. Yeah. Now if I was a kid, I'd be climbing over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean was, it, was, it, was there a lot of also females playing at the time when you were playing in the cage? Like, was it, was nah, it? Nah. But that's how I knew, mm. I guess that's how I knew that I had a little bit of talent because, as I said, that anybody was able to play. Mm. But if I couldn't survive within the cage, I felt like I wasn't, you know, coping, then, then I'd have been out because my sister couldn't cope in the cage and she, she was out. <laughs> mm. So my best mate, they, they, they wouldn't, it wasn't for them. So I knew that, that, that there was something with me in a football as to why I'd always stay in there. But the, 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 the guys that I grew up with, I mean, um, best mates with most of them now, still in contact with a lot of them. Um, they were really good for me, you know, helped me certainly grow and push me. And I would say, I'd use words, gas me up, but we never used to use that word back in the day. Our, day, our words were different back in the day. They've all changed. So I'm trying to stay down with Can the kids. Can you remember what was gas up? Was, what was, uh, what, what, can't remember. They used to gas me up. No, I can't remember the words now. It's all changed. You have to keep up, don't you? But they, they did, and they were, they were really supportive of me. We'd go to tournaments together, and they'd be like, this girl. And, uh, so, yeah, they were really good. So, going to Chelsea, supporting Chelsea, and then first club, Chelsea. How was that? Like, just the full circle, did everything. Yeah. No, it was a dream. It's, and, and if I didn't go to Chelsea, I would have never got a Chelsea trial and then I'd never played for Chelsea. So they had this tiniest little advertisement this big in the Chelsea programme because no one cared about women's football back then. And I didn't know anything about it. So I'd go to school, teachers knew nothing, youth club, youth workers, they knew nothing. 
and there was a little advertisement about a trial for an under-14s and got my uncle to ring them up and the way I was to the trial, turned up 20 minutes before the end of a three-hour trial because I got on the wrong bus. <laughs> <laughs> Which bus was? Do you remember, like, the bus? Yeah, yeah, I remember it. I had to go from Battersea up to Morden and then get on a bus. Or one, it was... I can't remember which way round, but there was a 164 and a 163. So I got on the wrong one. <laughs> and then I had to trek an hour, and, an hour and a half or whatever it was, walk across, get on the bus, and then... Were you feeling that pressure? Like, no, nah, because the football wasn't pressure. It's not... That was my out. That was my mm, release as a kid. Okay. So, yeah, football wasn't... It's never been pressure. So I just went... I got there in time for the matches at the end, which is the best part, right? So I didn't have to mm. do all the training, and then I got um, invited back. So, yeah, just to wear that shirt meant I didn't have to wear another top underneath it because I let the badge hit the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> was there a lot of girls at, at, at the mm, top? Loads, yeah. Oh, there was? Yeah, there was a lot. Was there, like, more, any players that you thought More from, nah. Mm. No, no one that I really... So you, you, you was the best there? I knew. I was like, I'm coming back. I knew. Yeah. And it's not arrogant. I just knew, like, yeah. there was no way that... I didn't feel at the time any of the girls that were there were better than me. But then, I kind of had that confidence. You know when you play with boys and, and, and as I said, they, mm. they did. They, they hyped me so much when I was a kid as well. And the fact that I could cope with them and, and their physicality. At the time, I didn't think there was a, a girl at my age that could do that. That I'd played in, I'd played around with in, in, in the Chelsea squad or against. And then you had to leave Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And I heard you were given Mark Overmars' boots. Mm. Can you tell us that story? Yeah. See, I didn't want to leave Chelsea. So basically, I got picked for England seniors at 17 and Hope House said to me you need to be playing in the Premier League mm. Chelsea were one league below it was this close uh. kept losing um, and it was between Arsenal and uh, Charlton at the time and Vic Akers uh, the, the manager and he was kit man at Arsenal he was trying to get me to Arsenal and I remember being in there you know showing me around the stadium JVC centre and everything and he got a call and on his phone I could see it come up Mark Overmars and I'm like oh your phone like he said, answer it. I'm like, I can't, I can't answer to the market. I was like, ah. It's not Mark Hughes, it's Mark Goodman. Anyway, I said, I, was so, I don't even know what I said. I was, yeah, hello, whatever. And then I give the phone. And it was basically two boots. He'd just signed for Barcelona, left Arsenal, and two of his boots had arrived at, uh, at the stadium. And he was a size five. That's... Yeah, I was, like, was a size five. Yeah. He could buy boots in the kids section. Yeah. yeah his so, trains um, are cheap. Adidas Predators, specially made. And I remember at the time, the Preds were just blades, weren't they? Yeah. And he had them specially cut underneath, like, studs. Like, the you know, the front bit had the little... You know, the old Preds that had the bit that come off? You yeah. know what I mean? Mm. They were, like, filed down. They looked like suede rather than leather. It was just mad. Ooh. And I got them boots. He was like, oh, you can have them. I was like, oh. But I wore them once in training. I won't tell you what happened to them. It's a nightmare. Go the on. kit man at Portsmouth, oh, no. when I was about to make my England home debut... The day before the, the game, we're training at the, the stadium. This is the, the day that I wore them. And he said, oh, all the new Premier League players have got these new studs. Do you want them? So me being gassed at like 70, yeah, 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 do it. I'll leave them with you. I'll get them tomorrow. He couldn't get one stud out, so he sawed it off and that was it. Never wore the boots again. Cut the boots up. So then I had to wear Umbro special hours for the game. But you kept the boots on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Now that I haven't got them anymore. You know, but yeah, I wish I wore them. Once in training. Did you think he was running faster when you when you was running? Because <laughs> he was, he was fast. Was fast. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. mad because we're similar in like you know stature yeah. was small and yeah, yeah. I did feel like I was good in him in training the day before, and I was good. I was thinking, ah, and I scored the day after on my home debut. But I just wish I was in those boots. <laughs> <laughs> so you would have preferred Mark Hughes's boots, to be honest. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd have hit a volley if I had these on. <laughs> So we're going to the uh, Unforgettable shirt. So that's the England Euros 1996, the home top. Mm. What memories, like, tell me your memories of the Euros 96 here, hosted in England. Yeah, I think it was because it was here. Yeah. Gaza was just my memory of that tournament. Oh. I just love him, absolutely love him. What, what a character. character. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Talk about characters and, that, and that's what the game has now, characters yeah. like him. Probably not as wild as him, but he was just unbelievable. It was that goal against Scotland, the celebration. Everybody was so curious as to what the celebration was. Yeah. <laughs> and I was too young to even understand what it was. <laughs> but yeah, just I think it was just Gaza that really, for me, that, you know, that tournament. And then I, I kind of didn't, cause I, as I said, I was only a Chelsea fan. I didn't really understand England and like international tournaments didn't, wasn't bothered about them. It was just that home tournament. And then, yeah, I thought, ah, oh, maybe one day I'll play for Chelsea. Maybe one day I'll play for England. So it was that tournament that really... Made me take, I guess, football serious and I'm wanting to be an England player and represent my country. And ended up being the most capped player ever. <laughs> I know, because of Gaza. 
There's no, there's no, um, you know, at the, the men's, there's no one that's even got those cups. Yeah. So Peter Shulden's got one, two, nine. Yeah. So he, he, and he ain't, he ain't catching. That one, two, six or something. Yeah, no. He's, he's, <laughs> Peter Shulden, there's no way he's catching you now. He can't no. get caps. So, nah. He no. should be, he should be the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> they should put you in there. Ask them. Get onto yeah. them. Get onto yeah. them. Yeah. Awesome. That'd be a vibe. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, but it's their records are there to be broke, aren't they? So like, yeah, why well, some? Um, you like the record the... cap holder? It's a cool thing mm. for people to mention, but it'll be broken soon. No I doubt. Don't, I don't think anybody can break that, you know. That's 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 that's, a, that's like up there mm. as a record. It's mad to think that I played that many times, mm. but I didn't think. You but I it. but I also think I was never a player that you know for injury or, or whatever I would never miss a game, never want to miss a game. Determination. You know, I'm Commitment. hearing Lucy Bond now, and you know, going through even this tournament in in, in agony and any, and I'm sure she'll be getting some sort of steroid injection to to allow her to play, and I pretty much did that in most tournaments. Damn. Play through the pain, play and through the pain. we're playing Bosnia away, and some people, and you know, not because they don't want to play for England, but it's like, oh, it's an easy game. Maybe I'll give it a skip. I'm there. So you wanted to play. I want to play every, every game. game. Hated when I was a sub. I just wanted to wear the shirt all the time. So maybe that's why. Once again, that's the cage again. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the cage. Yeah. Yeah. The battery. The battery. Yeah. So far up, England versus Germany at Wembley semi final. Yeah. Everyone's watching. You know, England had to win this tournament. It's at home, mm. and. I'm sure it was extra time for her. The chance comes in for Gaza as he slides, but he misses. And we end up losing the game on penalties because of what well, Southgate's been hit, hit supposed. Yeah, yeah. Did you cry? No, because I didn't cry, no. There's worse of things than, than losing a game of football. I, <laughs> and obviously, I did, that was my first tournament, so no, I didn't. But yeah, that miss. And because and he was having such a good tournament as well. Yeah. Like, ugh. If one person you'd want that ball to come across to on the, across the box the way it did, and someone to get on the end late, you'd think Gaza. So yeah, I mean that would obviously change. We wouldn't have had to go to pens, which we all know what England are like when it comes to penalties. <laughs> Absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Um, yeah. For but real. yeah, no, I didn't really have that emotional attachment to to England or football at the time. To to for it to. If that was Mark Hughes, though, me. there would be. Like, <laughs> you see. Mark <laughs> Good job I didn't say Dennis Wise. <laughs> no, what's mad, Vuj? In this game, Saki hits the post. Yeah. Mm. Mate, you got a deal after that. You got a pizza deal, didn't he? Yeah. Pizza advert, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, mate, you made a, he made a good advert after what was that. It, like, with a box on his head. Yeah. yeah. England have just lost. And you. <laughs> but Southgate is on TV. He was influencing, do you know what I mean? Hashtag ad. It made he, us start, feel he, might, he started the influencer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I was thinking it's this generation. <laughs> what do we know? I mean? <laughs> so he foresaw he it. But what was your first, was this your first England kit? Like the kit itself? Did you have yeah. did you get the kit? Yeah, yeah, no, I got this kit. Yeah, or shared. Fun. Me and my brother, little brother, same size. Yeah. We didn't get one each back then. It was we need expensive. to bring back sharing, man. Yeah, sharing. No one we, shares, right? Yeah, no one shares really? no more. Nah, no they don't. Shares. We had to share because we wanted like the kits. There's no point we were the same size. Mm. And obviously on his birthday, like being a boy, like he used to get all the kits. Whereas like I'd get one, like a mm. season. He'd get the goalie kit, everything. Oh, he get everything. Like, he get everything. Are you jealous? Everything, yeah. But and then the I was, but I wasn't because we we're the same size. So mm. I'm like, okay. okay, you can't wear two. I know you said uh, emotionally, um, you weren't as tired when perhaps England went out in '96. Mm. Did that change? When England lost to Italy oh, recently, yeah. oh, what, what, how has the? But you know what? It, it did been? change, but it did it, it did change, and I, and that hurt. But the fans ruined it, and that's what that I can't get over. Like, the stadium. you know, like the whole build to that tournament and 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 to the final it was just the best thing for in, the English game, and, and and you could see on you know how the fans and the, mm. the players for the probably what well, the I would say the second tournament, but the, the closeness with that and how mm. it brought the nation together for after you know a really crap two years with the pandemic. And then, and then fans behave the way that they do. It just ruins things. It's like, how can, you, how can you be upset when there's people that are frying bottles, doing this, kids getting hurt, adults, it whatever. Mad. It's mad. You can't behave like that. like Mordor. So it just then ruins that, that attachment that you then have with the game because it's like, you're just ruining our game. It's, okay, I get what you mean. So, yeah. But yeah, it was hurting. It hurt even more that I was trying to get a ticket. Couldn't and... get one. <laughs> so I was like, right, I'm not staying in England to watch it. I'm going to go away. So I booked to Ibiza. I'm sat on the plane. <laughs> I got a text, you want two tickets for tonight? Oh. I'm like, nah, my head fell off. <laughs> oh. My head fell off. I've been trying to get tickets for the whole week. Did you guys beef for, for the I was on, final? it's like we're, 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 we're being pushed back on the way. On the... <laughs> I'm like, nah, I can't cope. No so then way. I was kind of glad we lost, because if I'd have missed that, uh. I'd been given two tickets. So you were spoiling it in our beef? No, I was. <laughs> no, I was around Italian. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible, yeah. What was the England kit that you wore on your debut? The one with the blue stripe down here. With your number that goes through it. Blue stripe? What? Right, it had like a stripe through it, didn't it? I know what you mean. It was the, yeah, red stripe, England was badge, stripe, but you could reverse it and it had the blue stripe. 
I, I just remember it being so big. Donna Beckham scored the like a ninety, the, like the a ninety on me. <laughs> Tucked into my baggy shorts. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was oh, Beckham's kit I was oh, wearing. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Oh, so yeah, the that red stripe. I thought it was blue. The red stripe, yeah. England beating Germany in um in Germany. Ah, oh, the five one. one. Emil Hesky, yeah, the, 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 the DJ. Yeah. I remember now. Yeah, that was the, the Beckham free kick against Greece. Do you still remember Captain the debut? The, the debut, yeah. Anything special happen? Scoring. Sick. Nah, yeah, no. You know why I remember it more? It was at Portsmouth, which was, as I said, Battersea A three straight up the A three. So. Everyone from, I was going to say the ends, but from my state, <laughs> <laughs> they were there and it was just nice that they could be there and, yeah, scored a free kick. I mean, the keeper probably should have saved it, but I'll take it. As the game wasn't, you know, can you imagine, it was against Portugal. Um, the keeper was about this big. <laughs> if I didn't score it, then I, then I definitely shouldn't be playing. Um, and it was just nice. We won 3, three nil, score on your home debut and then having everyone there that, you know, helped me to get to that point. And they didn't even know I played for England. I played for the youth age groups and never in school or when I lived on the estate did I ever tell them that I played. Because I didn't, until I become a senior international, until I hit like 30, 40 caps, did I start saying to people I was an England player. Because I just think, you know, sometimes you can get a one-off cap and yeah, it means something to you, but you're not an international if you get one cap. Mm. You ain't done enough to, to, to deserve to be there. So it was nice. When I got picked, I was like, look, I've been playing all through school for, because England used to go in half term. Mm. So it wasn't like I had to miss school mm. when I played at youth, youth age group. So I never told him, so it was nice. Do you actually there. get a cap? Hmm? Do you get a cap? Yeah. That's sick. Well, the women never used to. We used to get like a cap per tournament. So oh, you'd have all the names around it. That's kind of cheeky. And then just recently, I had about four boxfuls of caps sent out to me. Oh, retrospective caps? 172 caps. <laughs> I was <laughs> really get 172 caps. Yeah, they caps sent them all out. They sent? Bad. Everybody got them. So the women's that's... game now have all their caps. Because the men not... would get one every game. Do you know what I used to do? Sounds like a retro. When, I used, when I used to go to Africa every six weeks, yeah? Yeah. I used to give myself a cap yeah. for playing every time I... So when I got to Africa, I'd play. It's a cap for me. So I thought that's how it worked. I didn't know they actually send you caps. I didn't yeah. know that. You, you normally get them after the game. Well, I don't know if I had a men's I'm, I'm imagining. I mean, I know they always use... You actually see why they I'm being serious. You see the same way I put MBE on my Twitter? Yeah. It's the same way I used to give myself caps. So, love it, I actually love it. So how many you got? How many caps you got? So I used to, I used to go, so I went every year when I was young, so I've got about, shh, about 30 caps. Decent. What to, but, to Africa? Yeah, but I used to give myself a cap. But I never Decent. knew. I never knew. I might come and take yours, you know? Yeah. But is that weird? Like, how did you feel? Like, obviously, the caps that you're getting are new, but they're retrospective. It's like a re-release mm. of a shirt. Yeah, but the caps are all the same. Okay. So they've not changed. So they've always so been they've the always same. always been the same Burgundy, caps. Burgundy, yeah. The men are blue, I think, and the women is like burgundy. With stitching on the game. And then when you get your 100, it's a gold cap. Yeah. Whoa. Gold cap. Have worn nice. it out? Nah, the gold cap's nice. It comes in like a big glass, you know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like a cabinet. And then it's like sat, so you can, and then it's got all the 100 teams from the first game oh, around the side, four sides. We need that, man. Yeah. yeah engraved, so it's nice. Sat what, nicely in my living room. What, what can we get 100 caps for, though? Like... You keep going back to Africa. You've got to do more than <laughs> one got a year. I, I haven't got back ever since. Do more than one a year. You might be... <laughs> I haven't got back ever since. Ever since I've been here with William Hill, the, my family keeps asking for money. <laughs> so now I'm famous over there, so now I can't, I can't go back. But <laughs> filming. Filming's a filming. We, we should be... 100 good. episodes. Yeah. yeah you should give you a plaque, but we, I think caps should be better. Mm. So we need to talk about. OK. There you go. I want to talk about the haunted one. The haunted mm -hmm. shirt. So the Liverpool away kit, year 89 to 91. Now, of course, you're a Chelsea fan, and that was the years Liverpool dominated. Exactly, football. that's why. I used to come to the bridge, and they never used to hit that backboard. Exactly. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was the problem. The that was the problem. It wasn't so much it was mm. that I had anything against Liverpool other than the fact they used to beat Chelsea every time I used to go and watch them. So and I know how everyone was like, I hate Man United and loads of the kids I grew up with, they hated United. It was just something about Liverpool. They used to just beat us all the time and mm. I hated losing. So they just become the team that I hated just because we always lost, not because of anything else. But ironically, it was probably the shirt that I was like, I'm never going to put that shirt on. Mm. But actually it was the, the, the shirt that I, as a player, you know, fulfilled my, my dream as a footballer and, and that was to win the league. So. Twice. You then, yeah, twice, back to back. So you then, you do like a full circle. So I hated them, I hated everything about them, I hated the fans, whatever it was. Just because, I never even knew any fans, but I just hated everything <laughs> about Liverpool. And you go around and as I say, I ended up playing for the club and have to put the shirt on. I'm like, oh, I've got to put this red, this red shirt on. And uh, then you learn about the club 
mm. from what the club is and the fan base and yeah you get a whole different perspective of of the club but as i said as a kid it was just it was nothing as an adult it was just as a kid mm. hate losing to them <laughs> how would you take losing like did you did you do I anything hate mad no, i hate it yeah i hate losing <laughs> i got better with losing as i got older kind of realized that it's not everything is about but as a kid you know what it's like when you lose lose a computer game the computer's getting smashed up <laughs> oh, i'm the worst really yeah. i still do it now yeah, yeah i still do it now yeah I'm a, I'm a bad loser. Bad loser. Yeah. I can't see that. You seem like a pretty friendly guy. I'm a I'm a friendly guy, but it's just losing is the, just yeah, yeah. losing is just it's not it's like for me it's like how can, like even when I used to play like ISS international stuff. <laughs> <soccer, laughs> how's the computer beating me? I'm in my room playing. <laughs> how can I lose to the computer? Exactly. You tell me. That's, that's what I do all the time. How's the true? computer beating you? Yes. It doesn't make sense to me. And it's paid away from, yeah. yeah. Three that, nil down, you switch off the computer. It's getting switched off. I've got one pad. Out. Yeah, it's coming What's going on? It's coming <laughs> Did you ever play against Chelsea? Sorry? Well, did you play, ever play against Chelsea when you was at Liverpool? Yeah. You did? Yeah, yeah. And how but was you that? you know what's so mad? And it, for my whole career, every time I played against Chelsea, you know, like the song... I'm singing it. I can't help myself. As I'm coming out, I'm like... Yeah, it's a banger, though. So I'd be stood there Chelsea. and I'm just all the Chelsea songs that come on in my head, I'm just singing them like, and I'm, they're like, power. I'm like, sorry, sorry, bring myself back. Oh, <laughs> but shit. yeah, always. <laughs> it was an interesting... I used to hate it. I used to hate playing against Chelsea. I never wanted to, to win against them, but obviously there's moments that I did and mm. scoring against them. Well, it's cool how perception changes mm. as you sort of grow up mm. and then you experience a club. And then Liverpool you up... fans are just unbelievable, aren't they? Yeah. They're real. Mm. You know, they support them, thick, thin, good, mm. bad. So now you've got a soft spot for Liverpool. Uh, now because now they, they're, they're winning oh, again. Yeah. You know, so you I did when they weren't that great. You know, when Chelsea started to win, when Mourinho came, it was like, yeah, great. Don't care about Liverpool. They're miles behind us, and now it's like, shoom, under clock. So was winning the uh, the Women's Super League the best moment of your career? Yeah, outside of representing England, yeah. Um, I always used to people used to ask me, what do you want to win them? And it was the league. It's just the one thing that I felt showed consistency in a team. Um, it's not easy to win a league. I think sometimes on, you know, if you go to tournament, you can go on a lucky run, you can get luck on a draw, but depending on what side, the same with the cup. So I always thought there was always a, a little bit of luck in cup, but in the league, and especially our league with such, you know, limited amount of teams, you had to win pretty, if you lose one, you're probably likely to not, to not win a league back then. Mm. You know, one loss is, is massive. So yeah, to be um, consistent and win the league. And at 30, it took me to the age of 30, all them years I was trying, <laughs> it's, 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 it almost sounds like it's too easy for far. Mm, I was going to say, yeah. What do you I mean? Because you've, you've got all these caps. Yeah. Then you've got these trophies. Like, you've just got all these trophies. I'm there with my ima 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 caps. imagination caps. Yeah. <laughs> it just all seemed too easy. <laughs> it's like you're playing the game on yeah. easy, almost. Nah, I just... But as I said to you, football was like... It was an out for me. Mm. It was my safety net. Um, and I think for a lot of people it is. I think, you know, people find something that helps them through other things that are distraction or could be a, dist a distraction. Mm. Football was that for me and I always thought when I, whenever, I, whatever kit I was in, whenever I was playing, I don't know, I just felt like I was somebody else. Not this mad kid. <laughs> just like, yeah, just bought something out of me, I don't know. It's not easy, it's hard. Mm. Mm. Spent a lot of time away from home. A lot of choices that I had to make, missing lots of things. Mm. Like, the Euro final. Huh? like the Euro Yeah, final. like the Euro final, yeah. <laughs> That was what yeah. was going to go No, I love it. Football, I love it. Gave me, yeah. gave me so much. Gave me opportunities to travel. And I probably wouldn't have travelled. Probably the first time I flew was with England. As a kid, we, you know, we didn't go on holiday to, to abroad. It was always to Wales. Yeah. So my first flight was to, to, to Ireland to play a friendly game. So that was my first time on a flight. Probably why I'm petrified of flying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it took me around the world. It gave me lots best, of opportunities. Best place you've been? With England or? Yeah, with England. Mm, probably China. Ooh. For the World Cup, that was our first World Cup. I just think the whole experience of being in a World Cup and mm. yeah, China was just unreal. You know, China. You know what's mad about China though. You know, like when you're in school, I'm gonna. T sorry, it's gonna sound really stupid, but when I was in school, you know, like geography, I hate geography. Like, hated it. Really? Oh yeah, I, well, I love it. it. Like capital cities. Yeah, and stuff. see, and I weren't interested. And you know, when they talk about like overpopulated countries and stuff, and you can't really imagine it, and they talk about it, and that was the first time as an. You know, I, I understood actually. Whoa, this country is way like over like the roads on the the cyclists. There were just there was just so many people. Yeah, like a, genuinely, there were so many people in such a tight space. It was crazy. I've got so, a billion. Yeah. I've got a billion. Someone told me that there's a Matt, queue to walk. Honestly, there's everything. There's a queue for everything. There's people that there's queues for 
the bikes, they have four people on the on the motorbike. Like, how do you even sit with bags? Improvisation. <laughs> like, how can I be walking crazy. home and I've got to wait? Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, it's true. It's true. There's, so yeah, this made me think. Oh, look, this is what it looks like. It's amazing. <laughs> so, 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 which which is your highlight of these ones, right? So you, the caps, obviously, being the most cap player, uh, winning the league twice with Liverpool, scoring oh. against Germany, um, and it was the first time England ever beat Germany, mm. and FA Cup winners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to say. Yeah, what's 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 the best? Do you, know, I, you know what? It has to be representing England for that amount of times and purely because it, to stay at that level for mm. that, because I was in the England squad for 19 and a half years. So to have stayed in the international setup for that period of time under different managers, so, you know, I remember it, it, there's so much jealousy and whatever else in sport and it's no different in, in, in the women's game. And it's like, you know, you're only in because this manager likes you. And, but, so to go through and know that they weren't the reasons why I was there, even though I believed that they weren't the reasons, some people will always you know, comment, and you, you can see these comments all the time. I think that consistency of being able to perform at a level to keep me there um, probably outweighs the other stuff. The named one. The named one. The final one. The final. So this is the shirt that we asked for. Our, what name was she have in the back of the shirt? Mm. Oh, this was hard. This was hard. <laughs> it was between two. What was, what was, what was the choices? Yeah. Ronaldo, the real Ronaldo. Let's, let me just put it out there. Yeah, the real the Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and Zidane, but I just love Zidane. Yeah, just because we were both like midfielders, so it's kind of like I had his video when I was a kid, a DVD of like him and like his skills and watching him in games. I used to just love him. He's just so smooth. Yeah, so smooth. So smooth. And the thing is like, Ronaldo, I love Ronaldo and mm. he's the best, he, look, he is the best, but I was never quick. And Zidane's not quick, so I could relate to him. He had to be like skillful, like smooth sea pitchers. And he, yeah, so he was more relatable to what I could do rather than mm. Ronaldo, where I was like just completely obsessed with like the skill level that he had. I love I loved Zidane too, but it's just the thing is, when he was at Real Madrid and I saw that number five in the back. I know, that was ugly, right? That's what I didn't like. like that's a centre back. That's Steve That's why I didn't number. like it. Yeah, that's the only thing. Number five, who does that? I thought you said there's no rules. Yeah, but there was rules No, then. there's rules to that. And that's, he's got a ball patch, not... so there's rules. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help that, but the five, you can help. I didn't like that either. Yeah. I'm with you at that. Now, the shirt we've chosen here is the, you know, 2002 Champions League final. Mm -hmm. Leverkusen, Real Madrid. Oh. So Dan plucks oh. it out of the air. The ball drops to him. He volleys it left foot. Bam. Top bins. Mad. But that's just him. He just makes something that is supposed to look difficult look easy. Incredible. And that's what's so good about him. Good players make themselves look like they've got so much more time than other players, and it's just phenomenal the way that they can do that. And he was the best at it. Oh, I don't, I don't believe that goal. I don't believe it. I don't. I, I don't <laughs> seriously, I don't think that game existed. I, I think something's because the ball, the ball is coming down straight. <laughs> what's he doing? The ball patch. And number five. That is not real. No, it's not. The five's not real. <laughs> I could not, but you hit it like a centre half, right? <laughs> was it in Glasgow? Hampden Park. Yeah. Hampden Park yeah. as well. Yeah, in Scotland. Yeah. Scotland. I've never seen football like that before. Have no. That's <laughs> exactly. Don't not say that. My Scottish friends, guys, and allow me. <laughs> yeah, because it was unreal to me. I and mean, then Stephen Manaman came on the sub. I just, yeah, I don't, I don't think I believed in that game, man. Honestly. Yeah. Isn't it mad, Steve McManaman, like, mm. going from Liverpool and playing with that calibre of players that he did to just for, for, for years there? It's just sensational. It's mad, it? isn't it? Life, you never know. You never know. Mm. You never know where it's going to take you. What do you think of the design yeah. of the Real Madrid kit? They always have a clean... Clean cut, and then a white. Cut. It's just it's very simple all the time. It's I like, like shirt, it. It's fresh, yeah. but so, yeah. I hate white kits to play in. As a female, oh, mm. it's just it? not... Oh. Yeah, especially not white shorts. Yeah. <laughs> you want it now? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, like, what happens, like? No, nah, but... <laughs> they, I just feel you feel bigger. <laughs> no, I get it. The Fair. women hate the white, yeah. I feel like... The, they the look nice did... if you're just wearing it, like, I just tuck it into a jeans or whatever. No, not... Um... I don't feel like I've ever seen a Real Madrid shirt dirty, though. It's just, like, classic and fresh all the time. Don't, don't think I've seen a Real Madrid player slide. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. didn't even slide, did they? They just play, they just play. Not so even beautiful. Zidane slid with that number five game. on his back. It's like Pauli, you can't slide. Yeah. I don't think we'll ever see another Zidane. No. I think the closest person, player I've seen to Zidane is probably... Berbatov? 
Okay. I got, I got, I got, I'm somewhere there, innit? That's not a bad shot. Yeah. Berbatov, myself, and maybe you, for. That's yeah, it. Other than that, never could get near him. Yeah. Never get near them. Never. It's, just... it's just that close control first touch. <sighs> I love technique. I love flair. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah. it. When you just see it and they just, yeah. I just, I'm just obsessed by him. As I said, I had his DVD. <laughs> I used to just watch it on repeat, like repeat, repeat, repeat. So far, quickly, what's your favourite shot out of the, the four we've mentioned? Probably the Zidane one, mm, Real Madrid. Yeah, so just I just classy. love the Real Madrid kits, I just love them. So classy. Do you know what I mean? It's what are you going to say? Vibe. Which one would you pick? I mean, I'd probably go with the uh, the, Ch the Chelsea mm. orange and grey. Yeah, it's got a cool. it's, yeah, it's it's sponsor school yeah. as well. Reminds of like my old school wallpaper <laughs> and from back in the day, because my mum, in my house, we used to have the, you know, there was when you walk through my kitchen. Oh, yes. We had the same thing. What's it called? Water. I don't know why the beads for what? Is that for the flies? Oh, the beads. Was it for the flies? In the kitchen? Yeah. What are they still I don't know me? what it was for. How much I time did you just swim for on purpose? Oh, those like, are brilliant. They were, they were. But they're yeah, so ugly. Yeah, like, what are they? Like, what is that? Bring that back as well. Why? why I didn't see that no one's house before that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it was the doors. Uh, yeah, they were doors. They were just. Yeah, they were, yeah. yeah it was to stop the flies, no? You couldn't sneak into the kitchen like that. Nah, like, everyone, no, you can't oh, even, yeah. no, you can't get away with any food. You can't get, yeah. Like, they know. But that's like the what are you doing in the kitchen? <laughs> the, thing, the things in the car with the beads. Yeah? You know oh, the things oh. you sit back, what are they? Did you like them? Yeah. Nah, they're the worst it's things. It's very Eastern European. Oh, what it's even very, are they? I don't know. Is what? that so you don't get sticky? Because I'm getting sticky to this chest. So it must be for that reason. I think it's like massage vibes. Actually. Oh. I think it's that stuff that they put on the, those fake doors. They put it on, mm. on the car seats. Yeah. It's a vibe, yeah, man. So. We spoke about Steve McManaman, but one thing we didn't mention is that he went abroad. He left Liverpool to go with Madrid. Did you ever think about doing that too in your career? Yeah, loads of times. Oh. Um, I had opportunities, but they just, you know, when things are just not, they don't come at the right time. Mm. I felt like the times when, see, I was homeless for a bit, so I had an opportunity when I just bought my first house in Liverpool to go to America and play, and there was a couple of teams there, and it was like, yeah, I'm going to do it, and I was getting everything done, and I was like, I can't leave my home. Just felt like too like nah, I'm too proud of this. I can't leave it, so I didn't. And then when I was at Everton, we got into the what well, was the Champions League, but at the time it was it was called the Europa Cup or whatever it was. And then when we'd play against teams like Roa, so a team from Norway, and there was a Swedish team, and the managers would because back then when we played, they'd just ring up, and you only had to call the manager, and you get like a seven day clearance where you can talk to a team in in that seven day period, and make a decision if you want to go. So that was Sweden and. Norway and America that I had opportunities at the time. Just to, yeah. yeah. yeah and, and the thing is, uh, so obviously that when I bought my first house and then there was times where obviously when I signed for Everton and opportunities to leave Everton and there probably was times where I should have because my career kind of plattered a little bit. But I just felt like I, I owed a lot to the manager who helped me when I was having difficult periods off the pitch as in when I was homeless. I thought I could, I, I owed, I felt like the only way I could repay her was to continue to play for her and give her everything I could through playing, so I wish I did, because culturally, when I when foreigners started to come to England, you start to learn a little bit about them and how they play, and culturally, it was different. You know, in England, if you make a mistake, you're like, Ugh. but them, they're a bit more mm. reserved, and they, 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 they're, they're problem solvers, find solutions to, to problems, whereas in England, we don't, we just blame. So it was nice when I, it was nice that I got to play with foreign players later on in my career when when the game started to change over here. Mm. So I don't have any regrets that I didn't because I've got opportunity to play, but yeah, it would have been nice to experience it. And it was huge in America as well. Like, oh, yeah. football over there, I feel it's like. huge. But it's fast, time, it's a fast it? sport over there. It's transitional. Okay. It's not really like, they're just like athletic, like end to end. Early on in, in women's football, you weren't getting professional contracts. Mm -hmm. How was that period and then the transition when it became professional for you? Um, difficult, trying to juggle work and training and then trying to be the best player you could be. Uh, that was always difficult. Um, I then got, uh, so when, when I was in England, sorry, England? London, when I was in London. No, that's because Scousers don't think they're from England, do they? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why. Uh, when I was in London and, yeah, I was homeless, it was like, yeah, I can't work in a coffee shop, then I've got to go and do my training, then I've got to go home and whatever else. Um, and then when I moved up to Liverpool, it pretty much was the same at first, and then the game went semi-professional, which meant part-time job, part-time training. Um, it wasn't until I was 30 that I got my first full-time contract, but even then, it wasn't really enough to live off if I lived mm. down south. Um, it was just that I lived in Liverpool and I took a risk. I, I thought this is the only opportunity I'm going to get. Um, it was less than what I was working for, but I just wanted to say I was a full-time professional mm. on part-time salaries. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, I mean, it, it was good, but but it gave me an opportunity to do what I've always wanted to do, and that's train and play every single day without any other distractions. And I probably got my best playing career um, in that moment. So it was no coincidence that, you know, when you can just fully focus on on being a footballer, how much you can develop and. Uh, as a as a player, and I did in that time. You know, when we won the league back to back with Liverpool, got in PFA Player of the Year back to back as well. So, the performances were obviously there for all to be seen. But that was only because I was training every day. Mm. But yeah, the, the pay weren't great. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> How good is it now that obviously women's football is getting better? Obviously, we've seen the Euros, mm. the support, and that girls can see that mm. as a potential career path. No, I think it's the seeing it, isn't it? The visibility of it now. I think there is a career in women in the women's game, and after the Euros, you know, young girls can dream to be become a footballer like young boys do now. Um, so it's exciting. It's where the games, you know, should be, and where all of us have always pushed to try and get it to. And the girls now are doing a fantastic job in in keeping it there. So they deserve it, and the game deserves it. And hopefully, these these young girls coming through can start dreaming. Well, that push it was vital. I mean, because like you said, now I think, especially after this tournament, you're going to see more uh, females playing football, especially in primary schools. When I was a primary mm. school teacher, it was just the boys in the playground yeah. playing all the time. And they so might have like, made a good point about yeah. that the other day because it's true. And it's facts. It's, it's facts. Yeah. But until girls, women get the same you know opportunity to play, it's an opportunity. You get an opportunity. It's, it's, it depends on you and how far you want to take that. But if there's no opportunity, you never know where you can can go with it. So mm. you're right, if, the, if, if a girl at primary school can have the same opportunities as boys do in schools and train and play as PE lessons, then who knows where, you know, the female game can go. But at the minute, there's so many um, barriers in the way for young girls compared to boys. That's why the game's, you know, still so far behind. Mm -hmm. Where do you see in the next five years? Hopefully where it is now. Hopefully sustainability. I think it's important that we just don't take the top end of the game to a new level, but then the foundations of it doesn't come with it. And then opportunities are lost for young people because certainly the diversity in the game needs to change massively. I look at it now. When I played for England in a squad of 23 players, there was probably 18 of us from London, rightly wow. so, biggest city in, 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 in the country. And now there's only two players in a 23-player squad that don't even start mm. from, in, from, from London. So that just tells you that Football's changed. It's no longer, I don't think, a working class sport. Mm. And so there's opportunity being missed for, for, for kids in, in you know inner city London that probably can't afford because all of the all of the regional centres are outside of London. There's not much opportunity in London for, you know, kids. And it's expensive now to play. Mm. So yeah, I just want opportunities for you can't tell me that there's no talented kids in London. Yes. It's ludicrous to think it. That there right. is. Yeah. So I think that the let, let's strip it back and let's not just take the top even further, that we want that to obviously progress. But I think it's important that, you know, these we talk about opportunities and visibility. If they can't see it, they can't be it. It's got to be done at, at the, the foundations of the game. And I think this, yeah, if we can keep growing that, I think it's important we do, and then just keep it sustainable at the top. Don't want to go bankrupt. <laughs> and, uh, there'll be no women's game. <laughs> 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 Scary, because this happened before in the American League. You know, they push and they go really hard, and three years they collapse, and they push again. So, yeah, I'm hoping for some consistency. I met the cages, man. Mm. 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 Cages, grassroots. It's expensive now. Local. My brother takes the kids to grassroots football. The amount they pay a year, like £500, yeah. £10 a week. Mm. Like, how do you pay for that? You've got two or three kids. How, like who? I wouldn't have yeah, been able to play. It's, uh, it's very expensive. It's, uh, it's expensive Make now to more play. It's accessible. Mm. has to be. Far, it's been a pleasure, man. It's been a pleasure. I've learned, I've learned so much. Yeah. You know? Me too, about... Uh, Caps if you go on holiday, I might have. <laughs> if you want to join the No Rules community how's and have a, a nice community, how's a computer, feel free. How's the computer beating me? <laughs> I've learned a lot too. Now I'm going to go back, I'm going to be saying to my brothers, man, years ago, how did the computer beat me? How is that even possible? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> thank you for coming today, Farah. It's been an absolute pleasure. And a big, big thank you to our guys at Classic Football Shirts for supplying all the wonderful shirts that you've seen on your screens today. This has been stripped, brought to you by William Hill. 18 plus, please gamble responsibly. <laughs>